Hi, Costa. My name is Lou Mitchell and I'm a casting director, also a member of the CGA. Uh, before we commence today, I acknowledge the land on which we stand and that of the original owners of the land. Um, I pay my respects to um, the owners past, present and emerging. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a casting director and I work for Maura Fay Casting. Can you please introduce yourself? Well, hello, Lou. I am Costa D'Angelo and I go by he, him pronouns. And you know, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to you. First and most important, how did you get into acting? Oh, wow. Um, well, it was probably over a decade ago now. I'm 22 and I think I started when I was 12 years old. And the way I got into it actually was quite an interesting story. I was in year six and I kind of jumped into modeling a little bit. I thought maybe why not I'll, my parents put me into modeling. And I met, I just met certain people that kind of got me involved in acting. And I had an audition for a film with Angelina Jolie called Unbroken, which she was directing in Australia. And I just put a tape up for my first ever tape. I was had no experience acting at the age of 12. And I remember I, I got through one round and I said, we'd love to see you again. And then another round and then a few months started going by and they said, it's between you and another kid for this role in this Angelina Jolie film. And I couldn't believe it. And I just thought like, it was the most exciting feeling ever. And I ended up not getting it. And I was devastated because trust me, I told everyone that I was going to be in a movie and it didn't end up happening, but from there, I think I just fell in love with it and said, you know what, I need to give this a crack now. I thought, how hard can this be? Look how close I got after my first audition. But trust me, it was just a lot harder than I thought back then. And no, I'm just, I'm very glad I stuck with it. And, and the stars kind of aligned when I was younger and I got into it. Yeah. Oh, that's a fantastic story. And um, I, I believe you've just actually come through the VCA. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, I just finished this year, three years at VCA. Um, and, yeah, that was always a dream, seriously, to, to go to VCA. I, I remember since I was young, I, I knew I couldn't study anything else, really. I wasn't smart enough, to be honest. And um, <laughs> and I just I knew I had no other interest in, in anything else, really. Um, it was either acting or, or joining the family business or something like that. So um, to get into VCA was probably the best best news ever hearing that because I, I really didn't know where my life was, was going after after high school and to get in straight away uh, was such a blessing because now I'm 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 still tw I'm only 22 and I've just started my career in this industry and I feel like I'm really have some like good experience behind me now coming out of that place with all I've learned from them so yeah and just to go off topic what would what would the family business be if you had to go into the family business? Gardening, of course. Doing gardening. Gardens. Yeah, that's exactly right. And trust me, in between jobs, I'm still my dad's getting me out of bed to go go help in the garden. So trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm still I've still got my tool. I still know what I'm doing. I've got a few. few well, steps. you know, there's nothing better than when you're not working as an actor is working um, with the earth, Mother Earth. It's great. It's a, exactly right. Yeah. And um, just on the back of that because you actually haven't been in the business that long. Um, can you tell me any projects that you've worked on and what would be your most memorable? Yeah, of course. Um, so I just finished VCA this year and uh, it was quiet for a few months, really kind of getting my bearings of, of doing the tapes, like, you know, a lot of times a week and, and just kind of wrapping my head around how the industry really is. And then I had an audition for Neighbours, which I thought was so awesome because Neighbours is such an iconic Australian series. And when they cancelled Neighbours, I was I was really disappointed because it was something I've always wanted to do. I thought it was it's a rite of passage, really, as an Australian actor to to, to go through Neighbours, and it's something I always wanted to do. And then they brought it back, and I had an audition, and I think the stars really aligned, and I just we sent through a really good self tape, and this character really suited me, and. I booked a role on Neighbours and I've been working on that for the last four or five months, which has been absolutely surreal. And it, it really is such a, like a well-oiled machine. It's such a big family and I, I've absolutely had the best time on that. So that comes out in two weeks where I'll get to watch the work and that's really exciting. So I can't wait for that. 
Um, Costa, you came through VCA at a really interesting time because you've actually lived through COVID. And because of that, I'm sorry, well, we've all lived through COVID, but you were actually in drama school. Because of your time in drama school, they actually let you go for a couple of jobs, didn't they? Which is highly unusual for um, a university course. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, I I just had a few oppor- opportunities come up um, while I was still studying in my second year um, with the Wog Boy film, Nick Giannopoulos, who produced the film, and he's an Australian icon, and Vince Colosimo, those two, they were creating the third Wog Boy movie, and... Word kind of got around, you know, I was an Italian kid at, at VCA and I started hearing whispers of this movie and I ended up getting a call up for a, for a, for a tape and I sent through a tape and it kind of got, got back to Nick and he wanted to see me and meet me in person. Um, I met Frank Latito, Nick Giannopoulos, and we really hit it off and it kind of felt too good to be true and I said, you know what, I'm at VCA and Nick G is also a VCA alumni, as long as Vince Colosimo. And they said, you know, I'm not sure they're going to let you go to come and film this. And uh, it was just that kind of timing that that worked out. And because of what was happening with COVID and everything, I think they were a bit more lenient on obviously, you know, letting me go and letting me kind of experience these things. And I'm just very grateful for VCA that they, they let me go and make a film while I was in my second year. And then also in my third year, they let, they let me go for a little bit as well to work with the ABC and do a Logie winning a, a, a TV show called Crazy Fun Park, which just won the Logie, which is unreal. So I think they're going to be a bit, they're going to be happy about that now that uh, we've, we've got the Logie secured. So yeah. I, I think you were very lucky because I think, you know, historically VCA wouldn't have let you go, um, but also what you could bring back to your mates, your classmates, it, with experience is fantastic as well. Yeah. Um, and what's something not a lot of people know about Costa D'Angelo? Oh, wow. What an interesting... <laughs> oh, what do not a lot of people know? Well... Oh, they probably didn't know about the gardening. They definitely didn't know about the gardening. <laughs> definitely not. Um, I don't promote that too heavily. But I don't know. I think what a lot of people seriously don't know is I've been acting since I was 11, 12 years old. I, I never told anyone at school because I was always a bit hesitant to kind of come out, especially where I grew up in high school and the kind of area I was from. I never really spoke to people about theatre. I think they would have kind of given it to me a little bit and I was a bit bit nervous on how people would react, you know, coming from especially an Italian family is the area I've come from and I, I never really told anyone. And I would really just, you know, I'd leave school early some days to go to do an acting class uh, in Brunswick or wherever it was and I remember never telling anyone I never wanted to do school theatre because I was always a bit shy and I, I was kind of hesitant of how people would, what they would think of that. And it wasn't only until a few years ago where I really where I moved to the VCA secondary school in year 10, where I just said, you know what, this is what I've chosen to do and it's what I love to do. I'm going to I'm gonna wear it proud. So I think what a lot of people don't know is I, I did start acting probably 10 years ago and it's taken me quite a while to kind of break through the industry and, and to be really proud of who I am and what I'm doing. And um, I wouldn't change it for the world, to be honest. It's the best job and in the world. And I happen to know where you did some of that training. So I'm wondering, did you do any dance and singing training as well? Oh yeah, of course. I was loving that. Yeah. So I, I did a, I actually did. Yeah. I, I kind of, uh, did a lot of dancing and, and singing for about two years. I, I just said, you know what, maybe let me kind of get these skills going. And I did some singing training, um, which I think everyone should do. It's so important. Uh, especially as an actor, you never know if you're going to have your Ryan Gosling moment and have to do a La La Land one day. So Yeah. I knew that you had a little bit of background there. Um, what project, did you consider your big break? Do you think that's Neighbours or something you did while you were at BCA? That's such a great question because Wogboy, the greatest thing about that for me was really experiencing what it's like to be an actor on that scale, even if it's for, if it was for two weeks while we were doing the premieres or like this. the first film I was ever in was in cinemas across the whole country and we had sold out red carpets across Australia, like that was something I couldn't ever imagine being my first job ever. And to kind of go onto a red carpet and have people want photos with me and that was something I've never experienced and 
it was really eye-opening to me to to really what this industry could could bring and what what could happen in the future as well so that for me was that moment of wow like this is this is seriously like the greatest thing ever and it's something it made me really want to pursue it even more because you know acting it can be so it can be so scary sometimes it's like what is this job it's so uncertain you don't know what's happening but it's those moments where you can get to bring your family around and you get to bring all your cousins and all your friends to the premiere and you just get to watch some work that you created that for me was the most rewarding part and it made me really realize that this is what i'm going to do so i think in terms of breakthrough moments i think Bog Boy had to be that that film I did it in the second year VCA. It had to be, and now I think the next thing Neighbours that I've been so excited to see. I, I'm really looking forward to that because that has such a great fan base as well, and it's like people are really going to get around it and really enjoy it. And my character, like, it's so great. It's so so exciting, and it's it's really different the way they've brought it back. It's I think people are going to be very excited to see what they do. Um, also, the interesting thing once again that we we hit on. Not only you, at the time that you were filming, most of Victoria was closed mm. and so, you know, you were able to film. And also by the time that they did the opening and where you were on red ca- carpets, we opened up again and then we closed again. So it's like your your timing was yeah. actually impeccable. Uh, it was impeccable timing. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, I couldn't really believe it, to be honest. Um, I remember we had a table read with the whole cast and Nick said, it was still last minute as well. Nick said we're, we're meant to start filming in a few days, and he said we still don't have the. We're still not sure if we're filming or not. And then by the end of that table read, a few hours later, he kind of announced that we had the rights to film. But if you look in the nightclub scenes or the few of the scenes in public, there weren't really many extras around because we couldn't get too many. So if you, that's a little Easter egg there. Um, it was meant to be a full nightclub packed out scene, but. Um, we had to kind of write into the script why it was a bit empty because the cool kids weren't there yet. So there you go. <laughs> <'Cause we're, laughs> that's because everyone was in lockdown. Um, uh, is there an actor whose career that you most admire? Yeah, um, there's a few, to be honest. Um, I'm really loving the work of, of, of Timothy Chalamet, to be honest. I And Barry Keogh as well, um, who's... Represent, we're both represented by the same people, but just watching him go to the Oscars and and all these amazing things, it's like that's something I kind of strive to be, especially when he's so close to me. Um, Barry Keogh, the way he's come up, he's I think he's great. He's doing some great work, and I, I tr- like I really admire the work he's doing. And that's the kind of, the kind of stuff I want to do. These great stories that have been told, um, especially in Timothy Chalamet is great. But I think for Australian actors, I want to point out some 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 young great actors. I think Hugh Jackman, obviously, every he's he set the this like the precedent for like Australian actors, and he's so inspiring. Um, went through the drama school system, and that's something I always looked up to. I said these great actors that I look up to, they all went to drama school, and that was a big reason I wanted to as well because I just felt like like I need to take this as seriously as they did and, and pursue it like they did. And Hugh Jackman's just awesome, and he can sing and dance. Maybe I should, maybe I should start. Maybe I should do a musical now. <laughs> I, I think he's great. Hugh Jackman's. He's. All, I've always looked up to him, and he plays Wolverine, which is cool. I want to play a superhero one day. We'll see. See how lucky I get. But I think Hugh Jackman's great. Yeah. Okay. And what would be? Well, you may have just answered it. I was going to say, what would be your dream role or character? Would it be like a a Marvel or a Wolverine oh. or something like that? You know, I don't think <laughs> maybe a little, maybe a, you know, that's so funny because every kid grows up wanting to be a superhero, and I grew up acting, and I remember used to watch those superhero movies, thinking that's pretty cool. I want to be in one one day, but maybe for me, it's more maybe the directors I want to work with. I think I'd love to work with, oh, like everyone wants to work with a Tarantino. I, I would love to work with someone like. Scorsese or, or Nolan, I love Nolan's films, and there's just like as far as you can think, those act, those directors, I think they're all amazing. I wanna, I wanna be able to work with those people I grew up watching one day, and you know maybe if I get lucky enough that'll happen. And um, I've been watching because I, I grew up watching those works and going to the movies every week to watch it, watch their films, and I think it's more so working with those people is really exciting to me, and I'd love to work with those directors. Well, that's good. And and if you were 
now talking to your 12-year-old self, is there any advice that you would give 22-year-old Costa to 12-year-old Costa? Yeah. You know, I think I just <laughs> enjoy it a bit more. Um, I remember I used to kind of think I had the world on my shoulders and I used to have to, you know, make it before, like I thought by 22 I'd be at the Oscars already, but um, I think CGA is just as good, to be honest. <laughs> um, no, I would just tell my younger self to really enjoy the process of learning and just not to stress about it. I remember really, really putting everything since such a young age, taking it so seriously because, and I'm so grateful I did because I learned so much, but I just want to enjoy the ride a bit more, you know, just don't put so much pressure on myself to be great and to, to rush things. Just really enjoy the process um, and enjoy learning. I think learning, I'm still learning today. I still go to class every week and a few times a week. I'm always going to be learning. So I, I'm really learning to enjoy the learning, you know, so I'd tell my young self, enjoy it a bit, have some fun. Uh, <laughs> and I think you've answered this. They've got a next question here, which is basically what does acting mean to you? But I think you've probably put that well and truly into words since you had that first experience and that's why you, you know. Yeah. You know, I the most rewarding moments in acting, I think for me, is it's the people around me that have supported me that whole time and, I think, you know, my mum used to have to drive me to class every night, like every single night I'd either be doing an acting class or a voice class, movement, anything. She'd always have to drive me up and down, wait for me for, for three, four hours. There was always, you know, she would always wait in the car for me. And to kind of see, you know, the rewards coming now at a later age after all, you know, my family helped me out with and it's really rewarding to see you know, my face on a screen if it's at a premiere or on TV in a commercial for my mum to, you know, see that and really, you know, say, well, it's it's kind of all happening at the moment and it's all paying off after all those years of, of waiting in the car and going to acting classes. So it's it's that's the best part for me and that's what it really means to me, you know, to make them happy. Well, I've enjoyed um, watching your rise so far, um, having met you a couple of years ago, but also knowing... Um, you know where you trained and everything like that, and hearing about you as a young, as a young kid. So um, I hope that you continue to rise, and um, and that you know that not only do you have your fantastic family behind you, you have a whole Australian industry behind you who are, are rooting for you. And um, and if you just keep that great attitude that you've got, then um, I'm sure that you'll do very well. Great, thank you so much. For you. <laughs>